Funding for this program is provided by Bruce Foods Corporation, makers of the complete line of Cajun King seafood seasoning mixes and other distinctive Louisiana-style food products. And by the Dairy Farmers of Louisiana. When you want good programming, just add milk. Hi, I'm Chef John Falls, welcoming you to the bayous of South Louisiana. Today, Cajun and Creole cooking holds a prime spot in the world of international cuisine, and I would love for you to know a little bit about it. So why not sit back, relax, and join me and some of my friends as we cook up another great taste of Louisiana. Chef John Fulce, and today we're cooking with soul on a taste of Louisiana. That's right, we're looking at the foods of soul cooking, a good old soul food, however you want to call it. What is soul cooking exactly? Well, of course, it's the foods normally attributed to the black cultures in the South. And of course, the churches were a major part of black cooking because obviously on Sundays and a couple days during the week when all of the blacks went down to little Baptist churches on the River Road. Gospel singing and preaching was a major part, but sharing of recipes was the main thing that happened right after the service. The preacher was, of course, the center of the attractions at the old Baptist churches. Here we have Zydeco music, and when you think of music in black culture, how can you think of anything else but Zydeco, that great African beat that is so famous in the soul culture of South Louisiana. Clifton Chenier, one of the most famous of the Zydeco musicians in the black culture or soul culture of South Louisiana. Of course, the soul restaurants featuring all of the great soul dishes that we're gonna cook today just dot the highways of South Louisiana, the Silver Moon Cafe. Boy, if I had a little Creole gumbo in that restaurant once or twice in my life. And of course, Evans, one of the famous places in New Orleans for soul food. Well, we're going to talk a lot about soul food and a lot about the soul dishes. And coming to visit with me in the kitchen just a little bit later is the greatest of all soul chefs in the city of New Orleans, Austin Leslie. What a great, great guy, a great soul sh uh, cook, soul chef. And we're going to talk about a lot of the recipes that he's taught me over the years. And he's a famous guy. We're going to talk about him when he comes out about what made him so famous. Soul cooking, how do we define it? Well, I guess I said a minute ago that it's the foods attributed to the black cultures in the South. You know, right after the Civil War, the, the country uh, uh, that seceded from the Union was, I, I guess, in a pretty sad state. We were uh, pretty poverty-ridden and, of course, in a state of despair. But one thing we had a fair amount of was good food, and that's one thing that we kept real close, near and dear to our heart. The black cooks, of course, that were cooking in many of the plantations had developed the style of cuisine that we know of as soul cooking today. It was a very, very simple way of life, a very simple form of cooking. But boy, was it ever flavorful. And that was the secret. Always in search of flavor in the black iron pots of the soul cooks. Simple dishes, whether it was greens or whether it was a leftover piece of pork meat or whatever, was turned into a great dish in soul cooking. And those dishes are everywhere in the South today. And that's what we're going to cook a couple of those dishes. The first one that I want to do is a dish that's so associated with soul cooking, but always on the holidays, always on the Sundays or holidays in Louisiana. So what I'm going to do is take this nice pork roast. This is a pork butt. And what I'm going to do is put some little holes in it with my knife because this little uh, uh, pork roast is going to be piqued, as we say in soul cooking. Piqued is any roast or piece of meat that's seasoned with all of the simple seasonings of soul cooking. You know, there was never any uh, flair or flambe to soul cooking either. It was always very simply presented on the plate. Uh, I don't think I ever had a meal in soul cooking that wasn't served out of a big bowl on the table or a pork roast right out of the pot. It was very simply done 
but boy was the flavor important and that's what we're gonna do right now flavor this pork roast look at the seasonings I have in this little bowl to PK the roast I have garlic right here green onions thyme parsley black pepper now, you, you can use any kind of pepper. I like black pepper myself, and of course some basil, whatever was available uh, in, in and around the city of New Orleans in the south, River Road was always used to pique the roast. Where'd that word pique come from? Well, I don't know, pique kind of meant sauce, so pique kind of meant that you were, uh, you were full of it. So I guess that's uh, what this is, full of seasonings into this old pique it roast. Okay, a little pinch of it down into every one of the holes of the roast. And you can imagine once this starts to cook, how this piquet garlic and green onion, salt and pepper will flavor the interior of the roast. Pork was a major, major part of soul cooking naturally because there was so much of it around and it was pretty inexpensive. So always a lot of pork in soul cooking. Okay, I'm gonna finish piqueting this old butt roast right here. And then the seasonings, again, were quite simple. We would put salt, pepper, whatever was available around the old cupboard. Let me turn my fire up on this pot. I'm going to put just a little bit oil in the bottom of the black iron pot also because we want to brown this roast nicely before we, uh, uh, before we add the water and other seasonings to it. So now that it's piqued, let me season the outside of it a little, oh, a little touch of pepper little touch of salt. Again, as you can see, very, very simple in nature and soul cooking. I'll just pat that all around, put the extra piqued seasonings right on the outside of the roast. Imagine all of those great, great flavors coming together on this soul cooking roast. Okay, and now down into the black iron pot. Now this roast has a little bone in it. Of course, if you'd like, you could get a roast that's already deboned. I always like to cook with a roast that has a bone in it because there's a lot more flavor, I think, with any meat that's still attached to the bone. And in soul cooking, I tell you one thing, they would have never thrown away the bone. That was a whole new dish. So remember, if you can find a roast with a bone on it, buy that one instead of the deboned version. Okay, once this is down into the pot, you'll let it get nice and golden brown on one side and turn it one step at a time until all sides are equally brown. That's a very, very important uh, thing because you want to crystallize the fat on the outside of the roast. That's where all that great flavor is gonna come from. Pork fat has a tremendous amount of flavor and I think that's why pork was so important in soul cooking, always that extra flavor in the pot. They didn't have a lot of ingredients to work with so naturally, they wanted a lot of flavor with the ingredients that they had. So once that browns, I'm gonna put some of the traditional seasonings of soul cooking, a little onion, and Austin Leslie, who taught me how to cook this great dish, says that he always used just onions, celery, bell pepper, and parsley. That's the only seasonings that he ever uses in his pots in his very famous Chehalian restaurant in the city of New Orleans. What a great, great soul cook and a little bit parsley. You can see how great that must, that roast is gonna cook up in just a second here. Look how nice that is. Now I have one already done, so I'll move this out of the way and wait till you see this nice piqued pork roast. I'll let you look at this. Oh boy, take a look at that nice color. Imagine how nice and tender that is. That roast has been cooking, oh, I guess somewhere in the neighborhood of about two hours in this old Dutch oven. And all of the great juices of the roast have just surrounded the bottom of the pot with the onions, celery, bell pepper, and the great garlics. And imagine the flavor inside of that roast now that the piqued seasonings have traveled all through that pork. What a great, great dish. Fact is, let me plate this up for you. Now, normally speaking, this, this roast could have stayed right into the black iron pot on the table, but I want you to take a good look at that piqued roast. Put a little parsley around the outside of it. This was the Sunday dinner in the soul kitchens of Louisiana. What a great, great roast. Let me cut this off. 
I'll move this out of the way and we'll get at that just a little bit later. Now what's the next dish associated, I guess primarily in soul cooking? When we think of soul cooking, all of us have to think instantly of greens, all type of greens. And what I have here is a nice bowl of mustard greens. And these greens have already been cleaned. In Louisiana's soul cooking, we cook turnips, mustards, collards, cabbage, all the different kind of greens available to us in this subtropical climate. And this is what the leaves look like before they've been cleaned, a big spine that runs right down the back of the mustard leaves. And then we peel it just like this because this is much too tough to cook. So we would pull it out like this. And the important thing is in greens, the greens have got to be washed two or three times because they grow in real sandy soil. And unless you wash these greens two or three times in clear water, I can guarantee you one thing, you're gonna have a real gritty pot of greens. And you can find these everywhere. I think the reason greens were so important in soul cooking is that in this climate of ours, we could have greens growing from, oh, let's say March or April, all the way to December. So they were always available in some fashion or other. And just think of the meats available to cook these greens with. I have to show you that. These different meats were typical of soul cooking. Every dish in soul cooking would have used some of these meats. Here we have the smoked ham hocks, very, very important in soul cooking. Here we have pigtails, yep, that's right, pigtails. Great, great dish, but you see how much fat is on the pigtails. Whenever these pigtails were used in soul cooking, a lot of times we would cut off a little bit of the fat and put it into the bottom of the black iron pot, and that's where the oil or the lard came from to cook the food. Here we have a little, oh, smoked neck bones. Can you imagine this again? More smoke, all great flavor in Louisiana soul cooking. And that's the important thing again, flavor is what we were looking for. The, probably the most famous of the meats in soul cooking is the pickle meat. This is the salt meat, a preserved meat that would have been used in just about every dish from greens to beans to chitlins to anything that would have been cooked would have had some of these uh, meats in. And of course, here we have some hog crackling. And of course, hog crackling wasn't necessarily used as part of a seasoning, but they were eaten on as the soul cooks were cooking the big pot of green. This was kind of like a little treat. So that's all the meats that go into the greens pot. And let me get out this greens pot because wait till you see this thing. This is a famous pot in Louisiana's soul cooking. Look at the size of this pot. And I'm going to put into the bottom of it a little bit butter, just a little touch of it. Or you can use bacon fat or just the fat of the pigtail, as I said just a minute ago. You can add any kind of uh, oils into the bottom of the pot you want. And then, oh, let's say that we'll put a couple pieces of pigtail down into it. Because that, of course, is one of the primary things that went into the greens pot. And you know, I'm going to put some of these smoked necks down in here, too because this will give the greens a really, really great smoke flavor. Of course, onions had to go into the pot. Onions, celery, bell pepper, just as Austin says, all of those great vegetable flavorings. Bell pepper right here, and parsley. Austin tells me that the first thing he does when he goes to work every morning in his restaurant is chop up a tremendous big old bowl about this size of all of the different fresh vegetable seasonings like this. So all day, whenever he gets ready to cook, they're all ready to go right into the pot. And that's a good lesson I learned from. We always have a lot of seasonings ready for the pot. Now, we'll let all of this saute for just a second until we kind of line the bottom of the pot with the oil and the seasonings. And then the greens would go right down into it. Look at this. Now, of course, I want you to remember that as the greens are washed, two or three times, there's a lot of water left on the leaves. You can see that how wet these leaves are. Well, of course, the greens need a little bit water to cook. And the water will come from the leaves, from the washing of the leaves. But if you think you need a little bit more moisture in the pot, go ahead and add a little water into it. The onion, celery, bell pepper will all help in that process also. Really, really a nice dish. 
And this would cook for about an hour and a half because mustard cooks faster than any other greens. In fact, there's a little saying in the soul kitchen that as fast as a mustard seed grows, that's how fast mustard greens cook. So remember, it's the fastest. Collard greens take longer than any other greens to cook. I prefer mustard myself. They're available all over the place. But turnip greens is something that you see used a lot in the southern soul kitchen. So greens, again, an hour and a half of slow cooking. I'll lower this fire so that we don't scorch them. And I want to show you what they look like once they're all cooked. Take a look at this nice bowl of cooked greens, all cooked down. I had some ham hocks in this particular pot of greens because, again, a nice, nice smoke flavor from the ham hocks. Look at the juice in the bottom. This is called pot liquor. Pot liquor from the famous greens cooking of the Soul Kitchen. Very, very important because that's where all the flavor is, but also one other thing. That's why it was so important in Soul Cooking to always have a nice platter of cornbread whenever you serve greens. You had to have cornbread because the cornbread was used to sop up the pot liquor from the greens right here. Very, very important in soul cooking. And then a couple other dishes I want to show you quickly and move the greens out of the way. This dish was one of my favorite growing up and going through the River Road region of Louisiana and visiting some of the black homes and eating some of the foods from our black neighbors. This was one of the dishes that I really enjoyed. This was a turnip stuffed with pork sausage. The pork sausage was really full of flavor, a very simple dish that could be found anywhere. And the soul cooks would take the turnips and route it out and fill it with pork sausage and then bake them in the oven and surround it with a turnip stew. Can you imagine something that simple, but yet at the same time so tasty and absolutely elegant when you think about it in cooking? You ought to really try this, any kind of stuffing down into fresh turnips. Now, this is not rutabagas. Rutabagas is the yellow turnip. This is the white turnip, as it's called sometimes uh, in cooking. This was a dish I really loved. This is a baked onion. And we had a lot of yellow onions around South Louisiana soul kitchens. And of course, the garden in the back of the house always dictated the dishes that we would be uh, using in the kitchen. Onions were everywhere. And these onions would be hollowed out just a little bit, as you see here, and filled with a little bacon fat or a little lard or whatever and baked in the oven. Sometimes a little chicken stock was added to it. And it made just a wonderful sweet vegetable after the onions were uh, cooked and brown. Very, very nice dish. And this was absolutely one of my favorite dishes in soul cooking. Well, that's just some of the great things that we think about when we think about soul cooking. And the guy who taught me just about everything I know about soul cooking, Austin Leslie. <laughs> hey, Austin. Hey, I was just talking man, about you. How you doing? Oh, Lord. Looks well, like, look like, look like you got all the secrets here, man. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you just stole everything from me. I'm, I'm going to be hard to beat now. <laughs> look, 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 let me tell you something. When I think of soul cooking, I think of you. You taught me how to do most of these things. Man. And look, I hope I, I hope I did them right. I don't know if I'm doing I, them right. You did it right. Sure. They, they look good, you, huh? They look, everything look great, man. Everything I, I, looks great. I want to I tell all of my friends out here that they may not have met you personally, but I know they met your counterpart because your restaurant was the restaurant that Frank's Place was patterned after, the great television series. And whenever anybody watched Frank's Place, they were actually watching Austin Leslie. How did uh, that all come about? I tell you, it was so, John, you would, it's hard to believe. The place was so packed when they come in the door. People was eating them. That soul food so great. They went back there, man. The first thing they wanted to know was about the gumbo and the stuffed food with them greens. I mean, they said, right there, they said, look, you got to come up to Hollywood, be the technical advisor to the show, Frank's Place, all of a sudden. I was in Hollywood. I, I tell you, I didn't even look. It was like in heaven. And then while I was there, I was cooking that food on the studio. People was coming all out the rafters, man, just smelling that food. The food was great, man. So here it is. No, nothing like soul cooking. Nothing like soul cooking. Well, well I, I tell you, I'm a student of soul cooking because growing up on the river, as you know, I mean, we, I would walk down the river road and all the black families had the doors open with the soul cooking gone. And of course, we'd just go in and out of every, every one of the cabins invited in to eat a little bit of food. I just loved it. Let me ask you, you're, you're the king of soul cooking. I've got my own definitions of it. What is your definition of soul food? They call it 
cook it with soil, you got to, the food that sticks to your ribs, it lasts all day. It's almost like, you know, having a run of them old good old drink times, you know, and all of a sudden you say, look, man, what's, what you got, some heavy food? That heavy food means some good old rice, greens, red beans, good gumbo, and don't ever leave out that stale bread, that old corn, you know, like say, like some bread pudding, I call it stale bread. That really sticks to you. I mean, it's, it's almost like you were saying about, uh, you know, those churches, you understand? See, everybody, everybody go all over and somebody will cook some greens, you see, and that's like the repast. And everybody brings that good old food in there, man, and then they start talking about who cooked the best greens, who cooked the best potato salad. That stuff is great, man. Well, the churches I know were actually a source of a lot of, uh, of, a lot of the recipes. No. After church was over, everybody would gather in the front yard and oh, share yeah. recipes and new techniques, and I remember that well. I really do. That that was a sharing of recipe time right after church. Even the seafood, you know, just like the first people go on the river, cook, fry, you know, catch that fish, catfish, you know, they cut it down the middle, shuck, and take, see, years ago it would be like, instead of to use that, not the uh, the flour, you know, they'd get that, uh, what, what is that, the, uh, the, uh, the other kind of flour we use, uh, bre uh, cornbread flour, you right. know, whatever it was, they fried it in fish fry. Find that fish fry, you know. They used to have those Saturday night fish fries and all that stuff, man. What, that was what, great stuff. Why all of the interest lately in soul cooking? You know, as I travel around the United States, and and it's in just about every city, just as Cajun and Creole was about uh, a few years ago in the in the early '80s. Uh, it was always, every city you went into had Cajun and Creole restaurants. Now, just about every city I go into has a soul restaurant, or at least some soul dish on the menu. Why all of a sudden the, uh, uh, the interest in soul cooking? Well, the key, the key to the whole thing, I know that everybody, when they come down south or all over, they have an envie for good food. An envie. Envie, you know, you know what I mean <laughs> That's by a that? Want, a, a, a want, a real need, you know? yeah. And when they go, you know, like some people do that bland food, you know, and they be worrying about it, it's on a diet and everything, you know? <laughs> you understand, just like we talking, you know, somebody say, man, look, that soul food, is it good healthy for you? I say, healthy for you, I say, you'll die with a smile on your face. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? So, and when they come down south, you understand, they find out, say, like some people say, man, I don't know, greens, they don't even know greens are served with rice, you know, that's heavy, you know, they think greens are on the side. And then when they taste some good greens that we put that good seasoning in it, you know, it's just like we're talking, that flavor, you know, put that bacon fat in there, you know, those little, little uh, garlic pulses, celery and all that stuff. See, a lot of people, don't, they don't cook it right, and that's why they can't come out right with it. And they don't have the flavor. Now, you were telling me one day when we were sitting talking about soul cooking, you said that some of the black cooks who actually worked in the early kitchens of New Orleans developed soul cooking by just taking what was going to go into the garbage can no and doubt. bringing it home and no using doubt. it. Is that true? Well, yeah, well, let's face it. Just like the bellies on the fish, you know? People throw the bellies away. Some people didn't even know they had a fish had a belly. You know, just like the, the chitlin. And see, that's like the bottom part, you know, like the care part, a good shank. People didn't know what Shanks was all about. But see, if you go down in New Orleans or down south, you go in all the black neighborhoods, that's what they have in, in the market. They have, you know, oxtails. I mean, have, I was in a restaurant, a lady came there just about, about two weeks ago, and we was talking about pigtails. She was from up north. She thought a pigtail was a ponytail. <laughs> Well, you know, I want to continue talking about soul cooking and some of the great recipes that you do, but you and I have to cook a little dish. Now, what I'm okay. going to do, I want to make, uh, we talked about cornbread a minute ago. I, I love the cornbread muffins that you make in the restaurant, and one of them that I really like is the fig corn muffin that you make. So what I did, I, I got, oh, I guess about a, you have to tell me if I did right here. I got, oh, about, a, I got about a cup of, a, of cornmeal in here, white cornmeal. I got about a half a cup of flour. And I got all that in the bowl. Now, here, I got to put one, one egg in. One now, egg. I'm using a yellow egg. You told me that's the best egg. Oh, yeah. The yellow oh, yeah. Shell. oh, yeah. yeah. Huh? Why is that? Tell me that. Oh, but look, it come out much better, I tell you that. <laughs> Those big old oh, yolks. Oh, big old yolks. Put, put one egg down. Why don't you stir that up all for right, me real good? Right. And I put that one egg in, and then I have, oh, about, oh, let's say uh, about a quarter cup maybe of uh Well, you know, one, one thing about it, we know the texture, you understand? And, and one thing about it, you see, it's like you have this whip here. A lot of people got to understand it. This is, you're in good shape. You're in good shape. So, uh, I want you to learn so much, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm, well, that's uh, good to know that we could 
teach one another what's happening. Hey, look, that's what cooking is all about. Oh, yeah. Sh sharing of recipes in Louisiana, yeah. it's been going back for 200 years, you all of us sharing recipes. Yes, it's a great, indeed. great thing. Now I'm going to put some of those great fig preserves. Man, now, man. Now I know you want to sop this up oh, on a biscuit. Huh? I'm ready to roll now. <laughs> You're on a roll now. This you want, is great I, stuff. I know you want to sop this up with a biscuit, but I'm going to tell you, that's going to flavor these muffins so good, man. I love these fig muffins. Let me tell you. Now, look what, I, look what I'm going to put them in. All right. Make sure you let them know that uh, you didn't line that. Hey, now. I, I, I <laughs> lined it. I lined it. Uh, lined it means that I put a little oil down into the bottom of each one you of the little that, pans so that they don't stick, stick when they cook. Right, 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 right. Now, I'm right. going to go ahead and, and, and fill this up because I don't want to mess it all up here. But I want to ask you one question. I got to ask you. A, I got to ask you a question. All right. Uh, in the early days of New Orleans, I remember as a young boy, my dad would take me to the city, and all over the neutral grounds and everywhere were tables of all this fresh seasoning. Did you yes. remember that? I don't know why, yes. I was where the stores used to sell that stuff. Yeah, yeah, what was it, little bundles Look, of seasoning? Well, you know what happened? They had a lady called Miss Bayham, right there in New Orleans and now. She grew all that stuff. Uh -huh. You understand? And she'd send it to the market. We'd go around and sell it. call that a seasoning bunch. Seasoning bunch. Seasoning bunch. bunch. You know, you put the celery, the bell peppers, the, the, the parsley, the garlic, and all that, a little thyme, a little bay leaf, a little basil, and all that stuff, and tie it up, and go to the neighborhood, sell it for five cents, I make a penny on it. And, and that, that, was your, that was your salary? That was my, that was my show fair. Go to the show on that one, baby. Now, but you had to sell a lot of seasoning oh, to get a penny. Well, look, I'm telling you. Okay, well, now, look, look what I've done here. I've gone ahead and filled up the, uh, the, the little muffin tins, or little black iron muffin tins with all of the nice fig muffin batter, and we're going to bake this at about 350 degrees over for about a half hour or so until it get nice and brown. But look at here. Now, I know you showed me how to make Man, these. Look. Man, look at hey, that stuff there. Woo! Test that out. How is that? Did it do any good? What did you call that? Soigné. <laughs> let the bon ton roll on. Mm. Let, the, let the bon ton roll on. Let oh, the good yeah. times roll on. Well, Man, I'm going to tell you. You've this, done a beautiful job. This is a great, great little muffin. I'm glad you taught it to me. But more important, I'm glad that you came to visit with me today as we cooked a little soul cooking. Thank you so much. It's a real pleasure being here, too. I love it. And yep. I want to thank everybody out there for visiting us in our soul kitchen today. And come back next time as we continue to cook up more of these great Taste Ooh, of Louisiana. Over there. Hey, get some of those greens. Some greens. Hey, look, get some of these greens. Get your little pot up. That's deep. Huh? Yeah, look at that pot of liquor. Mm -hmm. I might have a little plate here somewhere. Mm -hmm. well, well, yeah, no, you no, can no, get no, right, right, on, right on the cornbread. Look at that. Get a little bit Funding for this program was provided by Bruce Foods Corporation, makers of Bruce's Yams and other distinctive Louisiana-style food products. And by the Dairy Farmers of Louisiana. Fresh ideas in cooking begin with milk.